Wolfbox has just released their brand new Wolfbox GA50 mirror dash cam. And on this video, I'm gonna show you what you get inside of this box when you purchase one of the Wolfbox GA50 mirror dash cams. And then I'm gonna take it out to the car so I can show you all the features of it. And finally, we'll look at some test drive footage both at day and at night to see how well it actually performs. My fellow car enthusiast, welcome back. I am Alex and I review cool car gadgets and other accessories for your vehicle. So if those are the kind of videos that you like, consider subscribing by hitting the button down below to see more videos like this. And as always, I'd like to remind you that I have placed a link to this dash cam in the description below if you'd like to look at it further or acquire one for yourself. But with that said, let's take a look at the Wolfbox GA50 mirror dash cam. And here's the Wolfbox GA50 mirror dash cam. Now like all mirror dash cams, this can be used with the screen off and this will look and act like a normal mirror or we can turn the screen on and then this becomes a digital mirror and that can be controlled with this button right here and towards the top of the dash cam we have several input ports first we have the port for power in the form of a USB-C port then we have the input for the rear camera and then we have the space for the memory card and here's the back of the Wolfbox GA50 dash cam which is a very nice clean elegant design and we also have the front imaging sensor which is capable of recording in 4k and we can also aim the camera if we wanted to adjust that angle further. But let's talk about mounting the mirror dash cam to the existing mirror of the vehicle. As you can see, the mirror dash cam gets placed on top of the original mirror, and then it's gonna be secure with these two little silicone straps that they have included. One gets attached on each side, securing that mirror dash cam to the original mirror. But now let's take a look at the GPS module, and this is what it looks like, and it has some double-sided tape in the back, so we can peel this and stick this so it's not moving around. And for power, we have a cigarette lighter adapter plug, and this has approximately a core length of about 11 feet on here and a USB-C port. And in addition to the first pair of silicone straps that I showed you, they also include a second set of silicone straps, a little bit smaller if the mirror that we're mounting in needs smaller straps versus the larger ones. But now let's look at the rear camera. And the rear camera has an extension cord, which is roughly about 20 feet in length. And as you can see, it has that very nice metal finish on here. Now this is waterproof, so this could be mounted potentially outside of the vehicle or inside of the vehicle. And they have included double-sided tape to do that or screws. If I use the double-sided tape, I can place that on here, peel this, and then stick this anywhere I want on my vehicle. Now they have also included a bracket that can be attached to further control the angle of this camera and can also be used to mount the camera to a vertical surface, such as the back of the windshield on a truck. And finally, we have a little spatula, a cleaning cloth, and the instruction manual, which is in full color and shows us the specifications of the dash cam, the contents of the kit, and how to use the dash cam. But now that I show you the contents of this kit, let's move over to the car so we can see the rest of the features of it. And this is the Wolfbox GA50 mirror dash cam. Now I'm gonna turn this on manually, but normally this is gonna come on automatically every time we turn on the car. I like to do this so we can see how long it takes to actually start up. And as you can see, we are presented with the rear view of the vehicle. And on the left hand side, we have a compass and speed indicator, and also an indicator that we are recording. On the right hand side, we have the date and time, and then some icons in the bottom showing us what has been enabled on the dash cam. And the view is adjustable. I can slide on the screen and move the camera view down or up i'm gonna leave somewhere mine in the middle and if i swipe on the screen we're gonna see the front view which is also adjustable now the entire image is being recorded this is just adjusting what is presented right now on this screen and if i swipe one more time then we have a split view where we have the front view and the rear view and here you can see the entire size of the image so when i move my finger i am just scrolling within that space and if i tap the top portion of the screen we have the ability to adjust the brightness with this little slider right here I leave mine on max all the time, but you can bring that lower if you want to at night. And if I tap on the bottom, we have several icons. And I'll start with the lock icon right here. Tapping this icon is automatically gonna flag this section of the video so I can find it later. Perhaps I found that car interesting and wanna find that, Flagging it allows me to locate that video a lot easier in the future because remember, there's gonna be a lot of video recorded on here. The next icon just allows me to switch through the views, which is the same as swiping on the screen. Then the camera icon allows me to take a picture. If for some reason I saw something interesting I wanted to capture, 
and then this icon allows me to temporarily stop the recording notice that there's no more blinking dot and if i tap that icon one more time it, it re-enables the recording we also have a playback icon that allows us to play the videos that we have previously recorded as you can see on here this is the front view <laughs> tap that one more time and now it shows us the rear view videos but another neat feature is pressing the power button briefly that turns the screen off it still records in the background and this works like a regular mirror and nobody knows that we have a dash cam recording and if I want to turn on the screen one more time I just tap that button one more time I do want to test out the parking assist function notice what happens when I put the car in reverse the rear view automatically switched down lower by about 15 degrees. So now we can see the curve a little bit better. And now we have parking lines. Also notice that I have adjusted the parking lines so they represent and fit my car correctly. So I'm gonna show you a little bit later how these parking lines can be adjusted, which is a huge plus because some dash cams do not let you adjust those lines. I'm gonna put the car back into D and we'll see the parking assist function turn off and the mirror returns to its original view. Well now let's go into the settings of this dash cam. I'm gonna hit stop right here. I'm gonna hit the gear icon. And the very first setting is gonna be resolution. Whether I want this to be in 4K or as low as 1080 if I wanted to fit more in my memory card and we can also select whether we want the sound to be recorded by default or not. We can also choose for the screen to turn off after a certain period of time which allows this to revert back to a normal mirror is still recording in the background what I call stealth mode. But let's talk about G sensor sensitivity. This dashcam has the ability to detect when you get into a car crash. And here we can set the sensitivity of that sensor. I typically run mine on low. If I run this too high, every time I close the door or a car with a loud exhaust passes by, the dashcam gets triggered and thinks I'm crashing. So I run that in low but I recommend experimenting with your car because your setting may be different. We can also change what display we are shown when we first turn on the dash cam. In this case, I always want to see the rear view. And we can also change whether we want 12 hour or 24 hour time style and the time zone that we're located. Remember, this is pulling the date and time from the GPS. So we got to tell the dash cam where we are located. Otherwise, it's going to give the incorrect information over here. And we can also adjust if you're in California like me, whether we're in daylight savings time or not this is very convenient because it's going to add or subtract an hour so we don't have to adjust that clock manually finally we can adjust the rear view by flipping it either horizontally or vertically which is convenient if we place the rear camera in an unusual location but i said we can customize the parking assist and that is done with this reversing line feature <laughs> and as you can see the camera is showing the reversing view which is 15 degrees lower and it's showing me the parking guidelines which have little grab handles so i can slide those out out to the place where they're gonna better represent my car and I can increase how far they go out so in my particular case I know my car needs them to be about right here and now it's gonna be saved every time I go back into the parking assist mode but now that I showed you all the features of this dash cam let's take it out for a test drive so we can see the performance of the video both at day and at night
and that was the Wolfbox GA50 mirror dash cam. And I think this dash cam is gonna be a great choice for anybody who looked at the Wolfbox GA40 but wants additional resolution. Remember, the GA40 has been very popular and because it's been out for some time now, we know it's very reliable. So it's nice to see that we have a version now that has additional resolution in the form of 4K. Now I do wanna remind you that if you do wanna have parking mode on this dash cam, you do have to get the additional hardware kit, which I'll also link in the description down below. So if you guys have any other questions regarding the Wolfbox GA50 mirror dash cam, please put that in the comments down below. Remember, I also put a link in the description to this dash cam in case you want to look at it further or acquire one for yourself. If you guys found any part of this video helpful, hit the thumbs up button to support the channel and stay tuned as I have a lot more dash cam reviews coming up. Thank you guys for watching and as always, I'll see you on the next one.